Hello and welcome to this Ebony Live TV special coming to you from Eco Hotel here in Lagos, Nigeria. I am Lamide Akintobi. Now we're bringing you this Ebony Live TV special because as we draw closer to Nigeria's presidential elections, it is important to ask questions and engage with our potential leaders. I'm being joined by my colleagues Tosi Odunfa, Bolanle Olukone, Cynthia Kamalu and Zena Balugu. We also have a very special guest with us today as we ask about Nigeria's future and that is the All Progressive Congress APC candidate for President of Nigeria, General Mohamedou Buhari. Good evening and welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. Okay. Now we have a series of questions to ask you and we're looking forward to hearing what you have to say to Nigeria's youth who are a big demographic for Ebony Life TV and of course Africa and of course Nigeria more importantly. Now our first question is going to be asked about the economy and Bolani is going to take that question. Hello, sir. Thank you again so much for joining us. Um, in the recent weeks, Nigeria has had a huge blow to our economy. Um, we've had oil prices drop 50%, and oil makes up 70% of our revenue. So I think as a young person, and I think as a Nigerian in general, we're all wondering what's going to happen to our economy. If you were to win the election, what plans do you have to diversify the economy? Well, I think immediately we have to go into agriculture and development of uh, uh, salt minerals. Um, this is because uh, we have the land, we have the people, able bodies that are unemployed. Uh, other things like education, healthcare, will have to take time because the infrastructure has to be put in place. And that will take time and take more resources. Uh, certainly, um, uh, uh, agriculture and uh, mining too will take uh, uh, resources, but these are things that are, can immediately be realizable and um, uh, stop wastage. Uh, if you can stop the corruption, a lot of resources will be made available, you know, to go into uh, the infrastructure and build the economy. Uh, reviving the industries so that uh, people can get jobs, they can get goods and services. Um, Besides that, uh, again, you have to work very hard to make sure that uh, industries like textiles uh, that encourage farming, which you can, we used to produce cotton and export it after satisfying the home market for, 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 uh, for textiles industries. So I think there are so many things to be done uh, just because we have got the, uh, the uh, petroleum and the gas providing apparently up to 90% of the foreign exchange. It may be 70% of uh, GDP, but up to 90% of the foreign exchange uh, used to come from uh, petroleum uh, resources. So I, I think uh, uh, there are a number of things that can be done, but uh, fundamentally agriculture, mining, uh, stopping the corruption, you know, and imposing uh, some discipline in terms of accountability. All right, well, now we have a question from Cynthia, which is about women. I think you're outnumbered on this table, so uh, <laughs> she's got a question about women in politics for you. Go ahead. Yes, that's right. Um, please, General, in line with gender and development, let's talk about the marginalization, so to speak, of women who seek to earn political you know, roles in political parties. And, of course, the fact that there's a general assumption that women are determined to be the weaker sex. Um, what, what, what do you plan to do? How do you plan to lend a voice to women to contribute their quota towards a greater development of Nigeria? I, I think uh, all Nigerians are given the opportunity to serve, mm -hmm. depending on their capacity in terms of uh, their education and uh, experience and so on. I, I, I think um, the culture of uh, marginalizing any gender, mm -hmm. I think, shouldn't arise. Mm. Okay. All right. Short and sweet. Um, now we have a question about the civil service, and that's going to come <coughs> from uh, Tosin over here. General Buhari, um, the Nigerian civil service is considered to be inefficient, sometimes considered incapable, and maybe even expensive. Now, you have been military ruler and also chairman of PTF, so you have quite a bit of an experience with the civil service. What exactly beyond corruption are the problems of the Nigerian civil service? I, I think, um, uh, to be fair to our former colonial masters, I think they trained a credible civil service, a civil service that uh, uh, was trained to be apolitical, 
uh, they look at things dispassionately in terms of uh, patriotism, what is good for the country, th they do it because no matter which type of governments uh, came in, uh, their positions are secure. Uh, one that is abused for whatever reason, whether political or other social ills, uh, tribalism or religious uh, thing, uh, is what steadily weakens the civil service. And the, Ill, the security in it has been removed by uh, terminating their uh, career uh, in, in, in a very unorthodox manner. Uh, and then the question of uh, promotion and other incentives were not purely based on competence and so on. Uh, and I think um, uh, it is very important. Those uh, uh, qualities or policies that give the civil service confidence to serve, to give their best, are resuscitated. And this is what uh, uh, the government uh, will lead, God willing, will do. Is our civil service too expensive? For instance, lawmakers, uh, lawmakers' um, allowances, is it too expensive? Well, I, I can't remember all the details, but the way the Naira is tumbling, uh, I don't think there is anything that is too expensive because uh, I have just been reminded is about is, is the Naira is getting about 200 yeah. per dollar. Uh, to the dollar. Uh, uh, when the military left, uh, I think the government, uh, it went up as far as 100 during IBB's time. During Abacha, it was steadily 82 uh, naira to the dollar. That was why people were able to plan. Uh, and then now it is a free fall. It's getting to about uh, 200. So I wonder how Nigerian entrepreneurs can plan, you know, and establish industries when the Naira is so unsteady. So I think the first thing uh, that the government will do, uh, I think, is to uh, strengthen the Naira by making it stable uh, so that people and in uh, entrepreneurs can plan you know, and build industries and get goods and services again and employment. Okay. Now, the Nigerian youth are pretty much disillusioned for the most part when it comes to voting. And Nigerians in general, as a matter of fact. Now, a lot of Nigerians believe that rigging is part of the overall political process. APC, PDP, name the party, it doesn't matter. My question to you, sir, is will APC be involved in rigging? And should the youth consider it their duty to vote during this current election? Yes, um, I think the youth should appreciate that whatever elderly people like me do, and uh, say, let us say from 60 upwards, mm -hmm. is trying to um, improve the security and the economy of the country on their behalf. They have 30 to 40 more years to go. So, in fact, they are the biggest stakeholders in stabilizing the country both security-wise and economic-wise. The way to do it, they must participate in terms of making sure they vote and then their vote count. If they, if they take an uh, election for granted and allow incompetent legislators or corrupt governors to survive, then they are hurting themselves more than any group in the country. Sure, but on rigging. Yeah, this goes with the rigging as well. Because, um, for example, the APC, when it's, when it's doing its registration, ensures that they register at least 100 members in every polling unit. Out of that 100, you will certainly get 10 committed members of the party who knows the, the constituency, and the constituency knows them. So if there is any rigging, it may take place between there, the polling unit, to the coalition center. So the party has to arrange successive protection of voters' cards from polling unit to coalition centers, to local governments, to the states, and up to Abuja. Thank you very much, sir. Um, now, some have said, there's an impression out there as well that you know that the APC and the PDP are 
pretty much both sides of the same coin. They're not, you know, as we said before, they're a bit disillusioned. People don't necessarily have a lot of trust. Now, what do you have to say to combat that impression that, oh, it's all the same thing? Well, what I would say is um, to ask Nigerians to give us the chance. They have seen what the PDP have done to the country from 1999 to date. Let, the give, let them give APC the chance from the 14th of next month and see what we will do. But we assure them that we will be much more disciplined, much more accountable, and will bring security to the country. Okay. All right. Well, on that note, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we've still got more questions for the general. Please stay tuned. Now, you've mentioned why we should trust the party. I want to know why we should trust you as an individual. Well, I, I think they have already trusted me by giving me the ticket. You were um, recently at Saru, which is a theater production that took place in Nigeria. And we also saw that your vice presidential candidate, uh, Professor Shimbajo, was at the Olamide concert. So, I mean, it's a bit of a, it looks like, you know, you guys, I don't know, what's the, are you trying to be funky, trying to get to these, or you just really just want it to be, you're just cool like that. <laughs> you're just cool like that. Do you have any preferred types of shoes that you like to wear? Yes, I wish you had seen the one I'm wearing. Um, oh. look, everybody says you've only got one million naira in your account. Mm -hmm. Really, one million. Welcome back. You're still here with us on this Ebony Live TV special coming to you from Eco Hotel here in Lagos. Now, we're still joined by General Mohamedou Buhari, who is the APC presidential candidate. And of course, my colleagues, Tosi Odunfa, Bolan Leolukoni, and Zena Balogun, we're also joined now by another colleague of mine, the lovely Wumi Onolaja. We're also going to be talking about our future and what's coming up with the presidential elections on February 14th. All right, now we have a question from Zainab, my colleague Zainab, about trust. Yes, uh, thank you very much for joining us again. Um, so when choosing a leader, we're concerned with an individual's integrity, their past experiences, and their ability to deliver results. Now, you've mentioned why we should trust the party. I want to know why we should trust you as an individual. Well, I, I think they have already trusted me by giving me the ticket. Um, the primaries that have just been conducted was uh, as a result of congresses conducted all over the country. And the delegates uh, uh, came here to Lagos, were graciously hosted by Lagos state government. And um, a number of people throughout the country and uh, in diaspora uh, spent the time before their televisions. And um, uh, it was uh, a vote of confidence in the presidential candidate of the APC. I think this is the best answer to your question. Okay. All right. And now Bolanli has a question about uh, your future plans. Yes. Um, you know, we're hoping that whatever the outcome is, the election is going to go peace. It's going to be a peaceful election process. Um, but I'm curious to find out how you can encourage the Nigerian people if, per se, you weren't to win to prevent violence from erupting as what happened in 2011. Well, uh, we have already been working, uh, firstly, to make sure all those that reach the age of 18 and above get their CVC, permanent voters card. Yeah. And to make sure that on the days of uh, the election, uh, no matter the provocation or no matter how the weather uh, is, they should go and vote and make sure their vote counts. Um, it is very important that it's done because um, uh, this year, uh, if we reflect on how the ruling party has managed the country in the last uh, uh, 16 years, additional four years uh, will create a, a much worse uh, uh, economic and security problem for the country. Mm -hmm. So it is in the interest of all Nigerians to make sure they come out and they vote in mass and make sure that their votes count. Because um, uh, the misgovernance did not spare anybody. Whether you vote or you don't vote, you suffer the consequences of bad governance. 
So it is very important that Nigerians come out and vote en masse. All right. Well, I mean, we've, we've been talking about things that are important to young people, you know, so let's shake it up a little bit. I know Wumi has a question about how you plan on engaging the youth. Go ahead, Wumi. Yes. Um, we've noticed your recent activity on social media, from you recently joining Twitter and the increased visibility all over the blogs. And on a lighter note, let's commend you on those very fashion-forward campaign pictures. That yes. You <laughs> And I want to find out personally to you, how important would you say social media as a tool is to your campaign and to your administration? And should you win, how do you plan to use social media to engage the youth of Nigeria? Well, it's a, it's a development which cannot be ignored, whether you are playing partisan politics or not, because you want to know the feeling of the majority of Nigerian who are the youth. Uh, so if... Uh, uh, Nigerians uh, decide to use the uh, social media, uh, uh, then you make that a primary target uh, and make sure you either do it yourself as much as you can, as much time you can give, or commission people that are interested, because this is very important. You must use people who, are, who have the interest. Interests uh, uh, in your party committed to you as a person and committed to the system, and then to get to the people, and they must uh, uh, be of, uh, uh, of uh, credible intellect, that they have the time, they can understand, and they can react immediately, which means they have to be very well informed, because you can't be there without, uh, with limited information at your disposal. Yeah. You have to keep yourself very well informed. So I think, uh, is something worth encouraging. And um, I hope it will not take the young men away from their books in yeah. school <laughs> and so on, so that they spend uh, more time in their studies rather than on the Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> on the Twitter. <laughs> Note to everybody right now out there, stop tweeting, more reading. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'd like to uh, include a couple of fun questions now. Um, we noticed that uh, you were um, recently at SARU, which is a theater production that took place in Nigeria. And we also saw that your vice presidential candidate, uh, Professor Shimbajo, was at the Olamide concert. So, I mean, it's a bit of a, it looks like, you, you know, you guys, I don't know, what's this, are you trying to be funky, trying to get to these, or you just really just wanted to be, you're just cool like that. <laughs> are you just cool like that? I, I think uh, there is part of the society that feels um, rather too, uh, too reserved, and away. so I, I try to disabuse their mind mm -hmm. in a very decent way, <laughs> and I fear in places where they are not expecting me to appear, uh -huh. so that uh, they can feel that I too, uh, I have got my soft side of, uh, as a human being, <laughs> that I like to, uh, to see, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely impressed by that play, especially the celebrity uh, part of it. It was very well acted. Uh, there's a lot of professionalism and fitness on the part of the actors. <laughs> <laughs> All that dancing. <laughs> yes, I, I think um, uh, very few people can do that and, uh, and report to work the following day. Uh, I would like to just ask a really interesting question about fashion. Uh, I think f shoes or the lack of it have become quite important for <laughs> the presidential <laughs> position. <laughs> do you have any preferred types of shoes that you like to wear? Yes, I wish you had seen the one I'm wearing. Um, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get a shot of that later. <laughs> they are quite simple and comfortable. I think that's the most important thing about shoes, especially if you have to do a lot of working. Um, uh, it's not I think, the expensive ones that matter. Um, I, I don't like the narrow ones, you know, the, with pointed ends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would like the roundish <laughs> ones and the open okay. ones. They are much more comfortable. Uh, so you would take comfort over style? I take, I take comfort over expense or whatever. Okay. <laughs> so um, my question is, come election day, um, if you do um, win, will we continue to see the softer side of you, that personal side of you? Well, I have to because I want to carry people along. Um, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, there are people who think that I am rigid, unsmiling, 
<laughs> we've got no face masks. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, we've got no face masks today. And I'm being forced to smile. And some of it are wearing like plastic smile. <laughs> <laughs> you can see smiles that come from the heart and those which you are supposed to on you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> like that. <laughs> now, now there's this myth. Yeah. Well, I think it's a myth. You have to tell us. Look, everybody says you've only got one millionaire in your account. Mm -hmm. Really, one million. You see, some people develop that um, uh, idea when uh, our party got the the APC got the caucus to take decision on the levy for showing intent and getting the card. Okay. And uh, being a senior member of the party, because I'm part of the uh, major uh, committee at the highest level of my party, the CPC, then um, I saw the money was too much, uh, 27.5 million. Uh, that's very high as far as I'm concerned by any standard. It is. But when we were meeting, um, it was decided to shelve uh, any money for, for women, and then the uh, 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 people who are sickly or who are uh, like, like people who, uh, who really are very poor, mm. or they go and, and beg for, uh, you know, for a way of living. But uh, politics has no, they didn't ask, say, I, if you are handicapped, you will not uh, participate and so on. They say, okay, for the handicapped, for women is okay. And then I was looking for sympathy uh, from our colleagues in, in the uh, caucus to see whether they will cut down the one for the governors and the presidential candidates. Mm. I didn't get any sympathy around me. <laughs> <laughs> so naturally, I say, okay. I will put a call to my manager because I'm I intend to come out, you know, as, a, as an aspirant. I will put a call to my manager. Whatever is in my account, he must honor it so that he will not deny me the opportunity to participate as a presidential aspirant. So from there, the story developed that I don't have a million naira. I don't think if I don't have a million naira, I will be given an overdraft of 20 million naira. <laughs> <laughs> so you have more than one million naira? I have more than one million <laughs> Just to clarify, just to clarify. What don't we, I mean, what don't we know? What, what is something that's interesting? I mean, as you've said before, people feel like you can be rigid, unsmiling. We've seen a little bit of a different side of you, but what more would you like to let us know that we already don't know about you? Something interesting and, and just different and no, personal. I think you better find out the way you find out this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, may his soul rest in peace. Uh, my second in common, a very loyal and effective officer, Tunde Idiabo. I think he was, this question was put to him. Why was he not smiling? Uh, but he said he knew the country was such in a strait. He said there was nothing to smile about. And I think after that time, we were put in detention, both me and him. I don't think anybody has seen him smiling outside. <laughs> um, I think somehow I cultivated that. And uh, when I changed the course, get into partisan politics, then I found out uh, I have to change my habits and start to learn how to smile, especially in public. <laughs> uh, on that same note, with um, about um, your vice president, um, Idiabmo, he was, you were noted to be a pretty good team. And in fact, he was definitely noted to be a brilliant person. Um, you made quite a few economical or economic policies and all whatnot. And let's just say that they were truncated pretty quickly. Where do you think you would, we would be now if your policies were allowed to continue at that time? Well, I think those that uh, have experience and uh, can interpret, interpret economic development would have been very far. I have just uh, mentioned, I think, to some of your colleagues that uh, when we came in, nobody knew how much Nigeria was owing. But when the military handed over under Obasanjo, a government I was, I had the honor to serve as Minister of Petroleum under General Obasanjo, we left a, a healthy, economic, and physically safe country to the Second Republic. 
But by the time the military came back, four years, three months after, nobody knew how much debt Nigeria incurred after spending whatever savings the military passed over to them. But when we came back, we refused to develop the Nara. We refused to remove subsidy on petroleum and flour. We made an undertaking to service debt, both medium and long term, for the time we were there, and we were doing it. And we uh, encouraged agriculture. And we refused to take any more debt. And we devised counter trade, where we get essential commodities, machinery, name it. We go to international market. How much does a barrel of crude of Nigeria, the type, cost in the world market? How much your machines cost? So we give oil, we get those. And the national supply company then, that was handling the commodity aspect, get, because we were even short of food. Yeah. Rice, cooking oil, sugar. They made a profit of more than 11 million naira of that time within the 18 months the, uh, that system was in effect. Now the naira is pretty much now in well, a free fall. Okay, well, I think we've learned a lot about you and, uh, what, and things that you would like to do, and, and we've just kind of gotten to see a different side. Now, just before we wrap up, we'd like to ask you, what are your final words? Since we're talking to the young people now, what are you, what's your final message to them? What would you like to say to them as we get closer to the presidential election? I would like them to believe that we are accompanying them. They have 30 or 40 more years to go. It's better they get straight and serious about this country. Let them participate in the coming election. Let them make sure that the election is violent free and that people vote and they made sure their vote count. It's more of their interest than older people like us. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right, well, you've heard it from General Mohamed Buhari, and hopefully you've understood a little bit more about what he's about. Thank you so much for watching this Ebony Live TV special. On behalf of my colleagues, I'm Lamidi Akintobi, thanking you for watching. Make sure you go out, make sure you vote. Thank you.